Alabama A&M and Alabama State descend upon Birmingham on the final week of October every year, it's more than just a football game. It's a great big party, a family affair. However, when Toe met Leather this year on the floor of Legion Field, one team came out of the box and played themselves back into position to contend for a SWAC championship. I'm Mark Gray, and the HBCU Sports Nation rolls from Birmingham, Alabama. There's only one sports network strong enough and bold enough to cover historically black college sports and the MEAC, SWAT, CIAA, and SIAC. We know the HBCU story because we lived it. Join us on Saturdays for the Weekend Blitz where we broadcast the game of the week and keep you abreast of scores and sporting news across the HBCU landscape. Hit, hit, hit us up at hsrn.com. Often imitated but never duplicated. We're HSRN, the bubble voice of HBCU sports. sports. Serious what? 28. Alabama State desperately needed a win to keep their slim hopes of playing for the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship alive, and they took full advantage of miscues by Alabama A&M. Early on, after taking a 3-0 lead by driving their opening drive, Demario Bell connects from Greg Jenkins on a 62-yard touchdown pass, and he takes it to the house. Just like that, all of a sudden, the underdog Hornets were up 10-0. But you knew Alabama A&M would come right back. Cardarius Lacey, the all-time leading rusher in the history of the program, scores from six yards out, but they missed the extra point, and that would prove to be big, but not so much. Lacey in the second quarter now, with a 30-yard run after a fumble, taking it to the house, and suddenly the Bulldogs would go up 13-10. A little bit later in the second quarter, Isaiah Crowell, after a huge play, goes around the left side, turns it up, and touchdown. It's 17-13 Alabama State. They would continue to pour it on as quarterback Greg Jenkins, one of the top rushers in the conference, scores from nine yard route, and the route is on. 24 to 13 at the half. Alabama A&M got the ball to start the second half, but couldn't do anything with it, and State made them pay. After the long passing play deep down the field, set it up, Isaiah Crowell with the dagger. A three yard run for the score, and it was all over from there. 31-13, the Hornets knock off the Bulldogs for only the second time in the last eight years, but more importantly, they stay in the mix for a place in the Southwest Athletic Conference Championship game. When the community comes together. To not only celebrate, but to uplift each other. We become one, so let us unite. We, we stand, stand united, united with, with Southern University. University. There's only one sports network strong enough and bold enough to cover historically black college sports and the MEAC, SWAT, CIAA, and SIAC. We know the HBCU story because we lived it. Join us on Saturdays for the Weekend Blitz where we broadcast the game of the week and keep you abreast of scores and sporting news across the HBCU landscape. Hit, hit, hit us up at hsrn.com. Often imitated but never duplicated. We're HSRN, the bubble voice of HBCU sports. sports. Serious 128. The Magic City Classic and Birmingham is a family affair where groups of fans travel from Huntsville and Montgomery and all parts of the state to come to town to have a good old fashioned party. But Legion Field holds a very interesting place in the annals of college football. Some will tell you that this very place, which was loath to give African American athletes an opportunity to play, now wouldn't be standing had it not been for the struggles of the Civil Rights Movement. This is the historic 16th Street Baptist Church here in Birmingham. It's a place that holds a unique place in American history. On September 15, 1963, it was the home to one of the more horrific tragedies our country has ever known. 
Six African-American kids lost their life when a bomb went off from the basement of this building, shattering hopes and dreams and taking lives. And it sits right across the street from the Birmingham Civil Rights Museum, the place where Birmingham's struggle in the civil rights movement lives with each passing day. You can't visit the Iron City without a trip to this historic museum. I was in the fourth grade when the church was bombed across the street, 16th Street Baptist Church. And I had several friends that I grew up with that were actually in the church when it was bombed. And uh, it is a constant reminder. And some of the old icons, including Reverend Fred Shellsworth, who passed on last October, they are constant reminders that there was a price to be paid for us to be in the position that we are right now. The BCRI, which is what we like to call the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, is American history. And everybody needs to know the history of America. And the civil rights foot soldiers, Reverend Shellsworth, and all of the accomplishments that were made in order for us to be able to vote next month. I mean, it didn't come free. Somebody had to pay a price. And Reverend Shellsworth and a lot of other the civil rights foot soldiers paid the price for us to be able to vote for the president. Black Sam's political power is what is concentrated. We're beginning to use it, develop some sophistication, form coalitions, which I think are important. And we'll be beginning to learn how to play politics. So the dust is now settled on the 71st annual Magic City Classic from Birmingham, and this year the folks from Montgomery will party all the way back home, and in Huntsville, well, it's wait until next year. Till next week, I'm Mark Gray, and that's the story from the HBCU Sports Nation in Birmingham.